Yo, guys, what is up? Max in our video, and today we're going over 10 things I wish I knew before I started playing WoW Long. Now, this is going to be a mix of, like, a tips and tricks video, as well as, like, general good information that the game just kind of leaves out. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. WoW Long, if you didn't know, is a new Souls-like or Neo-like game by the team behind Neo 1 and 2. It's kind of a successor to it, but it's doing a lot of things differently. There's a lot of new mechanics to learn in this game, and I have now beaten the campaign. I put about 45 hours into the game and I wanted to share everything I know. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get right into it. This video, by the way, is entirely spoiler free. I will be showing off some of the in-game mechanics though. Uh, and also I was given a early review key by Koei Tecmo uh, to play the game early and make informational content for y'all. So a huge thanks to them. So genuinely the number one thing I wish I knew going into the game was understanding what gear is good and what gear is bad and that has to do with the embedment system which is not explained it was not available in the demo and I wish I knew this information going into the game because you get a lot of gear thrown at you while you're playing and it's hard to identify what is actually a good drop and what is a bad drop and so I wanted to explain that real quick I might have a whole video on just this system because there's a ton of depth that I could go into but to start us off, let's look at the pieces of gear. When you get a piece of gear to drop, it's going to drop with a star rating. That star rating dictates the amount of passives that can roll on it. A piece that has a four star rating will roll with more passives than, for example, a three star. So ideally, you're looking to make a few pieces of gear your main gear, uh, and you should be looking for three and four star gear to use because you get more passive slots. Next up, is the embedment system. Now this system is super important to understand because it'll help you identify what's good and bad. Now to start us off, I've just got a piece of gear here as an example. These are the Lieutenant General Greaves. They are a two star, it's a plus seven, meaning that they've been upgraded to plus seven, and we've got three passives on it. The morale rank points gain, melee attack, spirit damage, and toxic damage taken. Now when we look at this, there's a few things to understand. First off, the embedment system allows you to remove passives. You cannot remove the very first passive on a piece of gear. So when we go over here, you can see that the morale rank points gain is in red, meaning the very first thing that you should look at when you get a piece of gear is one, what's its star rating? And number two, what is the first passive on it? Is it good? Because you can swap out all of the other passives. That is really important to understand. So for example, I can take off this melee attack spirit, it is gone. I can take off this toxic damage taken and get rid of it. But note that when you put a passive back on, it is going to be slightly worse than if it came natively on the piece of gear. So you're looking for gear that has a good top passive and has at least one or two decent rolls in its passive slots because the damage that will roll will be slightly better. So. For example, we've got toxic damage taken, minus 3.6. If I remove that, um, now let's go and put toxic damage taken right back on it. Um, let me find this. Elemental damage, toxic damage taken. As you can see, slightly lower than it was before, aka you're going to want gear to roll natively with some good passives because it'll be slightly better. It's not that big of a difference, but it'll be slightly better. Um, next up, a piece of gear can only have one of each color except for the gray slash white things. So, for example, I just rolled blue. Blue is going to be a defensive modifier. I can only have one blue on my piece of gear. As you can see, all the other blue slots are now grayed out. This is the same for green and red, uh, aka if you have a piece of gear, red is going to be like damage. So I can't, for example, put fatal strike damage in every single slot once this has a red slot on it, I cannot put any more red. So you're gonna be looking for a, like a red, a blue, red's gonna be offense, blue is gonna be defense, maybe some white passives, and then there are special passives. Now, I don't really have time to get into all of the special passives, but if we look at this purple slot, this reads spirit vulnerability upon enemy deflect. That is a special thing, and instead of being able to equip a, and like this on everything, in order to take this and move it onto another piece of gear, you need to delete one. It's like one for one. So if you find a special passive on a piece of gear, make sure you don't get rid of it. Uh, you can 
take it off, and then directly move it exactly onto another piece of gear. So in order to get these cool passives, you need to find gear with the cool passives. Um, this gear rolled natively for me. It rolled with spirit gain from normal attacks, damage to enemies, suffering from elements with this purple slot, and then I rolled flame attack power onto it uh, for a pretty nice pair of gloves. The next thing that Wolong doesn't tell you is what the LB or the L1 button is. Uh, this button on controller, I'm not sure what it is on mouse and keyboard. Um, it never really explains when to use this or why to use this. Uh, this is guarding. It'll basically block damage and you will take less damage while you're doing it. I don't recommend doing it in combat unless you're like really unsure of the timing of an attack that's incoming. But what's really useful uh, that I used throughout the entire campaign doing this is it slows your movement down. Now, going slow or fast on like an analog stick can be a little bit awkward, and as soon as you start running, you can alert enemies. I am at level one in stealth, and I was able to sneak up on just about every wep uh, every enemy, get behind them, and do a critical strike uh, just by doing this. It slows your walk down, uh, and you can sneak up to enemies with zero stealth. Um, just hold this and walk up to them and backstab them for a critical hit. Uh, this was allows me to like kill a bunch of enemies that I probably shouldn't have been able to kill and sneak behind enemies. The AI in this game is not great. It's definitely a low point uh, for the game, and enemies aren't great at seeing you. So you can walk around enemies very close to them just by holding the LB and get rid of some really tough enemies uh, just by sneaking around them without having to invest heavily in stealth. The next thing that Wolong doesn't tell you, and I literally just found this out while I was recording this video after I beat the campaign, I actually wish I had known this, um, is that you can change weapons with an attack. Um, normally, you have to hold the right trigger down and then you can swap between weapons. And there wasn't really any reason to use my secondary weapon during the campaign. But if you hit the right bumper with the dodge or deflect button, you can actually do a attack with your secondary weapon mid attack. So this is what it looks like. Uh, you're attacking with your weapons, you hit RB circle, and you'll whip out your other weapon, and then you can just go into another combo. Um, that would have been really nice to know. Um, so you can chain combos and attacks just by hitting RB. Uh, you can do it mid combo or like after your combo to go between weapons. I'm sure like into like later combat and doing some advanced things, that would have been really nice to know. So I'm actually, I learned that too just now. <laughs> The next thing the game doesn't tell you, I guess it wouldn't tell you this, but just kind of like a general tip, is when you get into a mission or an area, as you kill enemies and as you raise battle flags, your morale rank increases. The morale rank is the little circle in the middle of your screen. Your morale rank is kind of like your Pokemon level. As you beat more enemies, your morale rank will go up and you'll be able to fight harder enemies. If you're a morale rank 3 and you get hit by an enemy that's morale rank 19, it's probably going to one-shot you. So you want to defeat the earlier enemies to slowly raise your morale rank and raise more battle flags, and your morale rank will increase and increase until you're ready to take on uh, the hardest enemies in the area. And you should probably avoid those super hard enemies until your morale rank is to their level or close to it. Now, the thing that the game doesn't tell you is an enemy with a morale rank 20, if it's the same enemy as a morale rank level zero, will give you the same amount of souls or key level up resources. So if you are in an area and you are struggling on the boss uh, or you need some level ups, if you're already morale rank 20, you can go to the beginning of the zone and kill the morale rank zeros and one shot them. Uh, and you're going to get the same amount of resources you would as killing the morale rank 20s. If you need a quick level up or are struggling in the game, that could be a quick way to get some level ups uh, or prep yourself for the boss. I'm not encouraging you doing this. I'm just letting you know that uh, if you're struggling, that is one of the ways that you can level up pretty quickly. The next thing I wish I knew is a little bit more of the intricacies of the virtue system. Now, this is your level up system in this game. As you level up, you can put points into these different virtues. It's kind of similar to uh, like Dark Souls, where you could put points into faith intelligence. But this is a very different spin on it, and it does it differently. Um, so to start us off, these different passives, obviously, like different virtues, increase different things. What it doesn't tell you is a few things. To start us off, Whenever you are putting points into these, they actually directly increase your attack with said elements. So for example, if you're going to put a bunch of points into fire virtue, you're going to deal more damage with 
fire element uh, that does seem kind of obvious, but it is only highlighted in that little bottom right elemental abilities uh, in the bottom, which I didn't notice until way later in the game once I started using some more fire spells. And I was like, oh my God, these fire spells hit so much harder than anything else. Um, so these, what you put points into, do directly translate to damage, but you can do damage with any element. And as you put more points into, you'll unlock more spells and uh, what I mean to say by this is you can do really good damage with the spells of a certain virtue without having to be a spell casting character because you are pumping spell damage even when you're going into something like martial arts. So I ended up with a character by going fire with really good fire spell damage and also I can do some really cool things with the martial arts abilities. Um, so I really enjoyed that. But when you're also leveling these, you're, you're increasing your defense to the thing that you're like virtue is strong against so for example uh there's kind of a, like an elemental matchup system similar to like pokemon where like water is good against fire when i am increasing my fire stat i'm actually getting defense to metal metal is what is weak to fire fire melts metal um so i'm getting more defense every time i level up uh, as you can see in that bottom right i'm getting more defense to metal when i level up this so uh, for defenses, you can go like a quality build. You can look for armor to offset your elemental resistances. But I randomly came in across some like water enemies that kicked my butt. And I was like, what's going on? And then I saw that my water defense was the lowest of all of mine because um, as leveling up mainly fire, I was not getting any water defense. So that would be something to look for on gear. The last thing to understand with the virtue system is different weapons have different scaling. Uh, I can't go through like every weapon right now, but in general, the same weapons get the same scaling. So for example, a lot of spears and like javelins have wood scaling on them. A lot of swords and dual halberds have fire scaling. A lot of the big hammers and the larger, heavier weapons have, um, have earth scaling. The like bigger swords have metal scaling and a lot of the like dual daggers or dual swords have water scaling. So if you're going to pick an attribute to level into, uh, I'd recommend kind of playing around with the different weapons and find out which weapon category feels really good to you. And then you can start not only improving your damage with these weapons, but also improving your damage via your virtue. Um, so yeah, just kind of knowing what weapons scale off of what is good to find because you cannot change the scaling of a weapon once you find it. The next thing I wish I understood when I started Wulong was this deflect difficulty stat. Now, deflect difficulty, it doesn't do exactly what you would think it does. So when I first saw this stat um, on weapons, I thought maybe that was the generosity of the timing, AKA a deflect difficulty of 111%. I would have a larger window to deflect attacks. That is not actually how it works. Think of deflect difficulty as your efficiency for deflecting. Now, what I mean by that is it'll be the amount of like stamina or spirit that is used when you deflect. So if I'm holding these 111% efficiency uh, deflecting weapons, when I deflect, uh, you'll see my bar went about halfway on our spirit. And if we fill that up all the way, um, just for example, um, there we go. If you fill it up all the way and you get hit in this stage, you're going to be stunned and enemies will get easy hits on you. So you don't want to fill that bar up. Uh, it can be pretty terrible uh, when you're in combat and that bar fills up. If we put on this hammer, for example, that's got 65% deflect difficulty. Now, when I deflect with this, you'll see that the bar goes basically one bar um, versus the other one was about half a bar. And this does seem to affect your dodging. So if I dodge with the hammer equipped, let's let this bar reset. If I dodge on this, you'll see that I basically filled up a bar again. If I go to the little swords and then I dodge, you'll see that I didn't even fill up, like I got to about half the bar. So when you're picking your weapons, this is one thing to just to keep in mind. Um, I don't think it's like too much of a factor, but maybe if you're going to be using a big ax, some of the enemies have really fast attacks and a lot of them, you might wanna have a quicker weapon to swap to for getting out of those attacks for deflecting before you go back to your big weapon. Just something to keep in mind. It's something I wish I'd understood before I started. The next thing I wish I knew has to do with accessories and these little panda friends. Now, accessories are kind of like artifacts um, you equip them on your character. You can have two equipped at a time, 
And these, the roles on them are actually very important as you cannot change the roles on these things at all. Um, unlike gear and your weapons, these are locked in place when you drop and they can roll with a lot of stats and have some nice things uh, for your character. Now, one of the best ways to acquire these are one through like running through the campaign, you'll get a bunch, but also from these little pandas. Now, if you get any pieces of four star gear that you don't think you're going to wear or four star weapons, you don't think you're going to use whatever star rating of gear that you drop for these pandas, they will turn into an accessory for you. And it is exactly if you give them a three star piece of gear, they'll give you a three star accessory. If you give them a four star, they'll give you a four star. So if you get a four star instead of like salvaging or breaking it down, I always come and bring them to these little bears to gamba for some good gear. In addition to gambing, um, as you kill enemies in the areas, you're going to earn an, a, um, a currency, uh, basically, that you can come to this guy, um, and this character will let you use Accolade Rewards. Now, uh, this has to do with the Vengeance system. If an enemy, an online, actual real player dies to an enemy in the game, you'll have a Vengeance target on them. If you kill that Vengeance target, uh, you can get these accolades. And these accolades, you can actually straight up purchase three and four star or gamble for three and four star pieces of gear. So let's say you're going through the story and you can't find a good hammer and you really want to use a hammer. If you come here and gamble, gamble uh, you can get a three or four star hammer uh, and kind of use that as your weapon. So uh, one thing to note with the Vengeance system is it's very much worth taking part of. Uh, you don't really need to engage in it. Just killing all the enemies in the area will ruin you those accolades. And if you're lacking, let's say you can't find a pair of good four star boots, you can come and gamble all your accolades to get four star boots to fill out your build. The next thing I wish I knew has to do with weapons special effects. Now these are most similar to like Elden Ring's Ashes of War. They are special attacks that your weapons can do and they cannot be exchanged or changed uh, at least I've now beaten the campaign and I haven't seen any way to change them. So what like effects you get on your weapon are pretty important, but there's some more things to understand with them. So for example, this light speed gust has 553 on it and meteoric strike has a 333. This isn't damage. It is the spirit consumed to do the attack. Um, by increasing your fire stat, they will consume less spirit. But for example, um, my first attack, this strike, as you can see, is going to bring me to about half my bar. Um, it's 533, so it's going to consume a lot. If I do my other attack, you'll see that it'll consume a lot less spirit, uh, as it was like a 300 spirit consume attack. This does seem to kind of translate like more spirit cost, the more spirit or the more damage it'll do because it costs more, it'll do more damage. Uh, so there is a translation there, but those numbers are specifically having to do with the amount of like spirit consumed, which I was very confused on at first. The next up is what are these orange effects? Now you can actually scroll over and look at this. Um, and every time you see an orange effect, it'll have an additional effect at high spirit, AKA you're generally going to want to be activating these abilities at high spirit, AKA you are swinging with your melee weapon. Uh, if you're connecting with melee attacks, you're going to generate spirit and your combo enders to your combos should be these special effects, which will drain the spirit. Orange ones get special effects. Um, I just lost that tiger. Let me just grab it. Uh, here's another one. But as you can see, it gets an additional effect at high spirit, enhances damage and prevents staggering from incoming attacks, except for powerful attacks by enemies. This basically can give you hyper armor, which is really nice. So keep an eye out for these like orange special effects as you cannot change them, you cannot move them to different weapons. Um, and also having two effects on your weapon that are at different uh, values, AKA like having one that costs a lot and having one that costs a little can be really nice to have because then you've got two different moves to kind of like use depending on what situation you're at. Um, but yeah, understanding these special effects are really important because you can't change them out. And so uh, knowing what to do with them is pretty important. Guys, that is going to do it for the video. Huge thanks to Koei Tecmo for giving me a code so that I could put out these inf informational content and videos for y'all. I have a ton of things that I like just can't fit into this video. So if you've got any questions about the game or want to learn more or just want some advice, I'll be streaming on twitch.tv slash moxie. And I will also have build guides out for a bunch of different playstyles and weapons. Uh, so stay tuned to the channel because I've got a lot of Wulong content uh, on the way. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will catch y'all in the next one. Take care, guys. Peace.